In this short tutorial, we're going to view transaction reports and donor information for a charitable organization raising funds on Facebook. We'll use Google Data Studio to build an interactive dashboard to explore that data. The data set that we'll use is Facebook's transaction reports, which are available for organizations that have enrolled in Facebook's fundraising platform. This platform enables eligible nonprofits to raise funds through different tools like donate buttons on their page or birthday fundraisers. Facebook already makes some insights about transaction history available to nonprofits to understand their donors and donations. For example, they can view charts and visuals about key stats like creations of fundraisers, donations, and the total amount raised, split by time and product. But if you're a nonprofit consulting those insights, you might not know that you can also export a data set that gives you a more specific and granular view into your donations for up to the last 90 days. Analyzing this data can help answer questions like, are there any individual champion donors who are providing an outsized contribution to your nonprofit through things like birthday fundraisers? Or are there any patterns about donations like what time of day or day of week people are more or less likely to donate? We'll get started with that tutorial shortly, but first, if you're a nonprofit interested in Facebook's charitable giving tools, you can request to sign up for these tools at the link on the screen right here. But keep in mind that eligibility for Facebook's fundraising tools does depend on which country or region your organization is based in. Also, please be aware that unlike other data sets in this series, the data that we'll be looking at is entirely fabricated and randomly generated. This dummy data doesn't relate to any nonprofit and contains no personally identifying information. Without further ado, let's get started. So to get started, first we're going to access the data using a few simple steps, and there's a link to a Facebook help page describing these steps in the video description below. Click Settings at the top of your nonprofit's page, and then select Donations on the left. Then click Download Donation Reports, select Transaction Report, and choose your time frame, going back up to 90 days. Then just click Download and save the file to a folder that you're familiar with. So when you open the file, you're gonna be looking at something like this. Uh, there are about 25 different columns or variables here. And if you'd like to know what each one means, the Facebook help article in the video description below actually lays out a description of each one of these fields in good detail. I wanna remind you that the data set that we're looking at here is for a fake non-existing nonprofit that we're calling Nonprofit Nation. And you can see quite a lot of really granular insights. Each row here is a specific donation that was made to your organization through different fundraising tools. One of the first ones I'll point you to is columns L and M, the name of your individual donors. This is a great way to see quickly if you have any super fans or, or super donors for your organization. In column P, you have the title of the specific fundraiser. Now we'll have different types of fundraisers that you can see here. So you can see there's a lot of birthday fundraisers um, you can also see some titles like Nonprofit Nation, the name of our fictional nonprofit here, which as you'll see over in the source name variable uh, is just the donate button on the charity's Facebook page. So there's a lot of donations coming in through the donate button as well. Um, you also have your net payout column in column E. This is the net payout you get from a donation. Now Facebook does not take any fees off the top of this for charitable donations. So the, the net payout is always the same amount as the actual donation amount, which you see in column C. And then finally, there's a few other interesting ones, but uh, column X is a, is a useful one. This is the timestamp and date stamp for when the donation was, was actually made. So now that we understand this data set a little bit, I'd like us to do a little bit of data cleaning just to prepare this for ease of use in our dashboard. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a new column here after our names, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to combine both of the names. I'm gonna make a new column called name, and we'll combine the first and last names just to make it easier for someone to read. There's a simple formula here for that called concatenate or concat, and all we're gonna do is, is add L2, and then we'll distinguish a space between the first and last name. That will be a space between quotation marks. And then we'll do M2, which is the last name. When you hit enter there, you see Judith Sims' name comes up there and we can just hit the bottom right of that cell to extend that to the bottom of this data set. We'll make a couple of other changes here. The charge time on, the, on in column Y is interesting because we can actually break that out into parts of time. In other words, we can make a new column uh, for the day of the week, and maybe we'll call this the weekday, and we'll extract the day of week of each of these donations. To do that, there's an easy formula here that you can use called weekday, so we'll type equals weekday. We'll click on that cell that we'd like to get the weekday from and hit enter, and we can see that July 1st, 2021 was weekday five, and it starts at one on Sunday, so that's a Thursday. 
then we can just extend that all the way down to the other rows beneath it. We're going to add one more as well. It'd be fun to know one day if there's actually a time differential between when you might get donations. So what time of day are people more or less likely to give donations? For that one, we just use a simple formula under a new column that we can call hour. And it is, as the name suggests, just equals hour. Click back on that time stamp so we can extract it from there. Hit enter and we can see that 5.36 a.m. was hour five. And let's extend that to the very bottom. The last thing we'll do then is just save this file. Uh, make sure you save it as a CSV file. That's the file type that it came in. That's a really universal file type for spreadsheets. And make sure you save that to a place uh, that you're familiar with. Now we're ready to upload this to Google Data Studio and start exploring the data. So to get started, go ahead and create a data source. That's the first step that we'll be doing here. And then after that, we'll create a report, which is basically an interactive dashboard. So I'm gonna go over to data source here, and then I'm gonna click file upload. Now there are many other ways you can see to connect a data source here, including Google Sheets, which is great if you wanna have live updating Google Sheets feed this dashboard. But in our case, we're just gonna drag over our data set where it asks us to. I called mine clean transaction report. So I'll click on that and drag it over. And you'll see Google Data Studio will parse the data and start processing it as you can see over here. Now this data is about 240 rows, so it's relatively small. It just takes a few seconds to process. Um, once it's done that successfully, you can see it's been uploaded and you hit connect at the top right to get started. The next page will show you every single dimension that the software has pulled or recognized from the data set. And a dimension here is just a column title or a variable. What you can do here is you can tell Google Data Studio what type of values are in each of these dimensions. So there are actually a couple of changes I'd like to make to these dimensions to tell Google Data Studio exactly what values are in each column. Now the first one is here in donation amount. I'm gonna let it know that this is actually a currency. This is a dollar value. And that just makes it much easier. It'll automatically, for instance, add a dollar sign uh, to the work that we're doing. I also wanna change the net payout amount, which we'll be using a lot here, into our dollar sign here. And then finally, for our weekday, it actually detected this as an ISO week. ISO is an international standard setting organization. I had some trouble using that, so I'm just gonna turn it back to a basic number and say one means you know Sunday and so on. So I'm changing this back to a number. And then when we're ready to do that, we've got our dimensions all sorted out. We can go to our top right here and click Create Report. I should mention that if you wanted to, you could update the data freshness here to a more frequent time, but for the purpose of this, we can just keep it at its default. So I'll hit Create Report, and we'll start building our dashboard now. Some of you might encounter this warning here that you're about to add data to this report. It's just a nice reminder that whoever can access the report will be able to see the data. So it's a good way just to make sure you're managing the privacy and security of your data. The first thing we're gonna do is create a title for this report. It'll save it to our Google Data Studio dashboard. And let's call this uh, something to do with our fictional nonprofit here. We'll call it the Nonprofit Nations Quarterly Transaction Dashboard. I call it quarterly because the data set that I chose to pull uh, with the dummy data is one full quarter from July 1st to September uh, of 2021. So now that we have this dashboard ready to start showing us some visuals, let's identify some questions we'd like to answer. And here are three that I think we should try to focus on. The first one is simply, do we have any super fans or super donors that are donating an outsized amount or more frequently? The second one is, are there particular days of the week where we over or underperform on donations? And the third one is simply, what is our average donation size? So let's get started to answer those questions first. The first one is the super fan question, which is, you know, who uh, is donating more or less uh, than others on our platform? Now, as we can see, there was a table that was automatically created. I just clicked on that and hit delete so we can start from scratch with a blank canvas. The first thing I'll do here is create a chart. And in this case, we're gonna make a table. This will just be a table chart that lists all of our individual donors how often they've donated. So I'll put that right here, just like this. And the way Google Data Studio's interface works, at the very top, you have some toolbars that might look somewhat familiar to you, including this one where you can add certain items or elements to the canvas. Beneath that is the main section of the screen, which is the canvas itself where you design your report. And on the right-hand side, you basically have different parameters or configurations for different elements that are in the dashboard. 
And these parameters are generally broken down by parameters about the data itself and about the style uh, and the styling of those charts and visuals that you've added. What we're gonna do is click on this table that we've just created and click on the data tab. And we're gonna tell it what dimensions we'd like it to show. Now the first one is let's change this from pay up currency, which isn't that interesting to us, to our fundraiser title. Because looking back at our data, we saw that there were titles like, you know, person X's birthday fundraiser. And it'd be loved, lovely to know who's doing birthday fundraisers that get us the most donations. So I'll put fundraiser title here as our main dimension. And then for our metric, in terms of what the value is that, they, that they're telling us for each one of those, we'll keep it at the default, which is the record count, which is the number of times that this particular dimension appears in the entire uh, data set. So right away we can see it showed up and told us that Kim's birthday fundraiser for our fake nonprofit, Nonprofit Nation, showed up 15 times, and Paula shows up second at 11th. Now we also see Nonprofit Nation itself listed 50 times. And that's because if you look at the data, you'll see that Nonprofit Nation is listed many times for things like when people click on the donate button on your page. The fundraiser title for that is just simply called Nonprofit Nation. So pretty quickly here, we answered that first question, you know, who are our super fans? There are other ways to answer that question, but this is my, one of my favorites because it's telling you that there are some people whose birthday fundraisers they dedicate to your nonprofit, and they get a lot of people to donate to that nonprofit uh, through the fundraiser. You can do a couple of other tweaks to this table that make it more interesting. For each fundraiser title dimension, right now our only metric is the record count. But let's also add, for instance, the net payout amount, how much was raised um, by these specific fundraiser titles. So we'll add a new metric underneath record count, and let's do our net payout amount. You could also do your donation amount if you prefer. And we can see a new column show up here that shows us the total amount raised by each of these. Right now, it's summing these each up, but if you go back to that metric there, you can see a little sum written in blue next to it, and you can actually change that if you'd like to other types of calculations, like for instance, the average. This will tell us the average amount donated for each one of these fundraisers. So I'll click average there and click off of that, and we can see now that actually, while Kim had the most fundraising donations with her birthday fundraiser, it's actually Paula who has the most dollar value per donation at $205. So we've answered pretty quickly our first question, which is who are super donors and our super fans? That's Kim, who's organizing birthday fundraisers, and Paula, who's doing the same, collectively got 26 different people to donate to birthday fundraisers. Now let's answer our second question, which is, are there any particular days of the week when people are more or less likely to donate? Now to do that, we can add a new chart here, and let's add this as a bar chart. So we have one bar for each day of week. Click add chart, go down to bar, and we'll just put it right next to our existing chart here. Now for this one, the dimension that we'd like to have here, in other words, each bar is our weekday. So I'll change fundraiser title as our dimension. I'll click on that and I'll change it to our weekday. And for the metric, we can stick with our record count, which is the number of donations we're getting each day. Now you can see the order here is a bit off. It goes from six to one to five. That's not how weekdays work. If you scroll down, you can actually change the sort order. You can choose the dimension to use to sort. So in this case, we will not sort by record count as it's currently done, but rather by weekday. And we'll make sure that that's ascending to go from one to seven. Now we have Sunday through Saturday in terms of the number of donations on each day. And you can see right away, Sundays and Fridays have really outsized performances in terms of number of donations received compared to days like Monday or particularly Tuesday when people are much less likely to donate to your nonprofit. So let's go ahead and answer our third question now, which is what is our average donation size? So there's another chart type here called a scorecard that I really like because it just has some very highly visible, easy to read, metrics that you can put at the top of a dashboard. So let's make this one about our average donation size. So you probably at this stage know how to make this happen. We can change our, keep our metric to our net payout amount. You can see our net total is $40,000 in the quarter uh, that this was being covered. But let's change this to average for now. And we can see our av average donation amount was 171.31. So now let's make some cosmetic changes and also some tweaks to the user interface to really make this a powerful tool for someone that you share this dashboard with. The first thing I want to flag is 
Over on this visual that we just made for the scorecard, it says net payout amount, which doesn't really do a good job describing what the actual value is here, which in this case is the average donation amount or average net payout amount. So over on the visual, as we, cl as we click on that and we tab over to our style tab on the right hand side, we can scroll down and hide the metric name. And what we're gonna do is replace that metric name with our own description. And you can do that by adding text anywhere on the dashboard. So I click the text icon at the top here, and I'm just going to write average donation amount like that. And now we've got a much more accurate, easy to use description of that value. And keep in mind, you can do lots of formatting changes here to make this look visually compelling and align with the look and feel of your organization if you'd like. I'm gonna add one more scorecard just to round this out, which is the total amount donated. So I'm gonna to go to add a chart, hit scorecard, bring it here, and I'm going to make our dimension our net payout amount, and we'll keep that as a sum. There's net payment. And that one we can leave as net payout amount because that's a good description of what it actually is. So there are some features that we can add now that make it so that anyone can control and customize what they look at, filter down particular areas, and see all the numbers change accordingly. And these are called controls. So let's add a control and we'll do a drop down list here. We'll make it a control that lets someone choose what fundraiser type they wanna look at, whether it's a birthday fundraiser or a page donate button. So we'll change the control field from fundraiser title to fundraiser type. Now let's take a look at what that looks like for the user. At the top right, there's this view button in blue that's kind of like a preview of the dashboard when you're not editing it. And as you can see, this has turned into a dropdown. This control is now a dropdown where you can click down and say, show me only, let's say, birthday fundraisers. When I click on that, all the other numbers and charts will change accordingly. And we can see that $18,000 were raised through birthday fundraisers. Kim and Paula remain our, our super fans. And we also see that it's the difference between Sunday and Monday is really accentuated. Seems like Sundays and Fridays are definitely the days to try to attract birthday fundraisers. You can do the same by toggling to different types, like looking only at page donate buttons, as you might expect then. The fundraiser title uh, goes to Nonprofit Nation. There's one more interaction that I'm really excited to show you. When you click on a specific visual and scroll down on its data tab, you see an option in most cases to apply filters when you interact with something. So I've done that here on the first table. I'll do the same on the bar chart here. And I wanna share and show you a really cool feature here. If I apply filters and click view. Now there are several more ways that someone can interact with our data. They can use the controls that we mentioned above, but let's say we wanted to look at the day, the fundraisers per day or the net payout amount metrics solely on, let's say, Kim's birthday fundraiser. Because we made this chart interactive and that when you interact with it, it filters other charts. When I click on Kim's birthday fundraiser on this table, you can see all the other data changes accordingly. It'll take a second and you'll see that both other charts change and we can see that Kim's birthday fundraiser raised a total of 2450 and you can see the average donation amount is the same as what's in the table as well. These kinds of interactions and filters get me really excited about what you can do with Google's Data Studio and how you can customize and tailor what you look at according to your business needs. Now, the last thing I'd like to show you is how you can share the great dashboards that you've made. Now to share these insights with others, you can click share at the top right. There's a drop down there and there's many different ways that you can share it. Invite people is actually a way that you can work collaboratively with someone else to edit and manipulate the same dashboard that you've done. But if you just like to share the dashboard for someone else to explore as if they were viewing it, you can click get report link. This will give you a link that you can share with others. Keep in mind, however, that whatever you share with them, you give them a link that they can see the actual data. So make sure they have access to see your data as well in order to be able to see the dashboard. More than ever, a nonprofit success relies in part on business intelligence and understanding your online fundraising performance is a big part of that. Facebook's transaction reports are designed to give nonprofits the power to uncover tailored insights that are relevant to them and their needs. It just takes a bit of time to clean and convert those reports into actionable visual tools for decision making. Well, there you have it. If you're looking for more tutorials like this, check out the playlist link in the video description below. There you'll also find important resources, including links to Facebook's tools for nonprofits. And before you go, please, help us to improve these tutorials. 
Take the short survey that you see on your screen to let us know your thoughts and how you might use these insights. Until then, we'll see you soon.